Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Rox, I'm a Western Tropical Astrologer and today we're going to be talking about the full moon in Leo. This is coming up on the 25th of January. It is happening at 5 degrees 14 minutes of Leo and I'm also going to give you the exact time when this is taking place. Um, 5.53 GMT time. So you can adjust that. By the way, 5.53 p.m. GMT time. You can obviously adjust that for your own uh, time zone. Who is going to feel this full moon the most? Those of you who have planets or angles in the natal chart around five to six degrees of fixed signs, folks. So I'm talking about Aquarius, Leo, Scorpio, and Taurus. You are the ones who are going to feel like this full moon impacts you the most, influences you the most, or, or um, you might see it reflected in your life in some shape or uh, in some shape or form. Not every single astrological event is going to speak to us. Not everything is going to be um, as impactful. If 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 that were the case life would probably be pretty overwhelming. So do keep that in mind, especially when it comes to listening to forecasts and horoscopes such as this one, which are general. It would be super, super helpful to have your, your natal chart, to look at your natal chart and to see, okay, do I have any planets, especially personal planets or angles around five to six degrees of fixed signs? That is just my recommendation. How can you generate your natal chart, you might ask? How can you uh, get a hold of your uh, astrological birth chart? There's a lot of uh, free softwares, uh, also free websites that can do that for you. Uh, you can use something like astro.com or astroseek on, uh, online. And the only thing that you need for that is your date, time, and place of birth. The time of birth is very, very important in order to um, to get an accurate um, natal uh, natal chart. And um, you're going to see within the natal chart, which looks like a circle, like a pie with different slices, uh, there's all these kind of like tiny little symbols, um, which are, um, most of them are the planets. And you're going to see that they, there are some numbers in there as, uh, as well. Um, those are the degrees. So next to each kind of like planet, for example, the, the glyph for the sun looks like a circle with a dot in the middle. Um, each planet has kind of like close to it, next to it, a number, and that is the degree of your sun, for example, of your um, um, sun placement in your chart. Maybe this is too much information. Please feel free to ignore it if you are not interested in the um, nerdy, geeky aspect of, uh, of astrology. You can simply just uh, listen to your to your to your forecast especially to the forecast for your ascendance or for your rising sign because you may feel like that speaks to you the most like that is very aligned with the various sectors of your life that are activated that are triggered by any astrological event actually uh that we uh talk about uh, in these types of videos, in, in these general forecasts, in these general horoscopes. I know that there are some astrologers out there who build their forecasts with the sun sign in mind. For example, Susan Miller is is uh, is one of them, but myself and um, actually quite a few others uh, build the forecasts with the ascendant in mind, because it's from the ascendant that we get the houses in the natal chart that uh, correspond to the various life sectors and so on. I'm feeling particularly geeky today in terms of like sharing the the technical side of uh, side of astrology with uh, with you. As I said, feel free to just skip all of this and jump straight to the to the update for your uh, for your uh, rising sign. If you don't know your rising sign, and of course you can listen to the update for your sun sign. What is this full moon about? So, I flagged who is likely to feel it the most. Um, there are some signs who are really going to like this, especially people who have um, personal planets such as the Sun, Moon, um, uh, Venus, Mercury, Mars, and the Ascendant um, in these signs. So there are some signs who are going to like this full moon. Those of you who have planets or angles around five to six degrees of Aries, Libra, Gemini, and Sagittarius, you're really gonna enjoy this uh, this full moon. I am gonna I am gonna put it out there because it's going to make some really nice aspects with your natal planetary 
placements, folks. This full moon is inviting us, <laughs> maybe I'm inviting you on behalf of the full moon, here I am, spokesperson of the full moon, um, this full moon is inviting us to look back at our life and to see what was going on around the middle of August 2023. Did we start anything? Did we initiate anything? Uh, did we experience any sort of uh, new beginning, any sort of like new chapter that kicked off around that time? Because this full moon is likely to bring themes that were on our radar around that time, so middle of August last year, um, it's probably going to bring them to some sort of a completion or a culminating point. Full moons in general are times of completion and of culmination. We see results, we see outcomes, we see the fruits of our labor, we see the, um, the seeds that we have sown blossoming in some, in some shape or form. There's a lot going on in the sky at the time of this full moon. I am warning you, this might be quite a long forecast. <laughs> But I do think it's it's going to be quite um, quite useful also. So the full moon itself is going to make a tense aspect, a square, to Jupiter and Taurus. So we're going to have a fixed T square in the sky. It's a it's a it's a tense aspect pattern. What does that tell us? It's telling us that some rigid structures that have maybe provided a great deal of security stability that maybe have given us a sense of consistency over time and as i said security over uh, over time some of those rigid structures may need to change they might need to go through a transformation they might need to uh, be altered in some um, in some shape or form will that cause some tension in our lives yes is that actually likely to result in auspicious, beneficial results over time? Possibly. Possibly. I am seeing... It's a very interesting full moon because it's happening right after Pluto goes into Aquarius on the 21st of January for the next two decades. Pretty much the biggest astrological event of this year, of, of 2024. Uh, so this, this full moon which is also activate, uh, activating the sign of Aquarius because the, the sun is going to be in Aquarius, um, is kind of like already bringing to our attention what is going to have to change, what is going to have to go through a radical transformation, a death and rebirth in our lives, what will need to metaphorically die, so to speak. So I'm not talking about literal death, I'm talking about, it's a, it's a figure of speech. What is going to have to die in order for us to to grow, to evolve, to experience more abundance, to experience more prosperity, to experience more um, stability in our lives, even from a material standpoint, I dare, um, I dare say. We are invited to look at the big picture of our lives right now. We are invited to also see, as I said, what sort of like structures have turned into something unsustainable in our lives? Where do we need to be a little bit more flexible? Where do we need to be a little bit less rigid? Because the more rigid we are, and we may feel like we want to hold our ground in, in certain regards, but the more rigid we are, the more painful the transformation is likely to be. The more we might feel like we're cracking under pressure. Speaking of cracking, something will probably crack not necessarily in our personal lives, but more at a, at a collective level, um, from a societal um, standpoint, something is cracking because we've experienced a lot of growth and the existing structures, the existing laws, the existing rules, the existing systems cannot accommodate something that has overgrown and now it's kind of smothering the existing structures, you could, uh, you could say. <clears throat> because the full moon is an aspect of Jupiter, there is a certain kind of like energy of, of, of positivity and optimism and faith and, and a sense of belief um, that kind of like infuses the, the, the changes that we're going through. However, I would be very careful because Jupiter and Taurus can be quite attached to um, conservative beliefs, to maintaining the status quo, to not rocking the boat. And... <sighs> 
I, I, I'm just gonna say this, Pluto entering Aquarius is definitely gonna rock the boat for the next two decades um, for big portions of big parts of, of, of society at a collective level, um, in terms of groups, in terms of communities, in terms of organizations, communities and groups and organizations are going through a massive death and rebirth, through a massive kind of process of resurrection, maybe of transformation, maybe of transmutation. They could turn into something else. And if we do stay attached to these sort of overly conservative beliefs that are just focused on kind of like steady, slow, patient growth and just maintaining stability. I mean, we might be in for a little bit of a disappointment <laughs> because there could be organizations, there could be communities, there could be groups of people that kind of like turn into this bulldozer type of force. And they're just gonna bulldoze all over these conservative beliefs, maybe around the economy, maybe around money, and so and so on. Uh, there's probably also going to be some good news of transformation. Um, I'm going to I'm going to put it out there. Um, we may need to stretch ourselves at the time of this full moon to accommodate growth of some of some sorts, which is not necessarily a bad thing. I mean, I don't actually see it as a bad thing. I do see a lot of optimism and a lot of faith, but something's got to give and we do need to stretch ourselves and we do need to get out of our comfort zone and we also need to look very closely at what it is that we need to purge and and remove out of our lives in order to accommodate this growth or in order to accommodate an area of our life that continues to grow i'm just gonna say that there is this sort of trust and faith in the in in, in the future um, that comes up at the time of this at the time of this full moon, um, both at an individual level but also at a collective level. There is this feeling of like, okay, it's gonna be better. It's it's uh, like the the systems that are going to be put into place are going to result in more security and more stability for, for, for groups of people, for certain groups. Um, they might result in more security and stability also in times of, of um, confusion and, and vulnerability. Um, we might see some really significant breakthroughs also connected with the physical body, um, maybe food, nutrition, medicine, drugs around this, around this time. Um, we're likely to also see some sort of leniency connected with maybe topics such as um, such as drugs or or um, medical kind of like issues or suffering, mental health possibly. Um, it, it almost feels like society is is kind of like ready to take a very um, confident, tolerant, and charitable approach to these to these topics, which I mean, I'm not here to pass judgment, but that might actually be pretty, pretty good for 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 quite a few people, um, for quite a big portion of, of society. Something is bigger than it was. That is in a nutshell, the theme of this full moon. And as a result of that, uh, we might need to enlist the help of, of, of maybe new people in our lives. We might need to make some, 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 some changes. We might need to close a chapter. We might need to release and, and I'm going to also use destroy the, the word, the, the, the keyword, uh, destroy as, as a significant keyword for this, for this full moon. Cause sometimes some things do need to be recycled. They do need to be burnt out. They do need to be destroyed in some shape or uh, in some shape or form to accommodate in expansion and increase. Expansion, increase, and inflation is a big theme at this uh, at the time of this full moon. Um, the full moon is happening in Leo. Okay, what does that tell us? Um, Leo, from, from an energetic perspective, from a symbolic perspective, is very much concerned with children. So uh, at a collective level, we might see news um, about, about children um, um, kind of like coming, coming to the forefront of our, of our attention. Um, the topic of children is probably going to be very discussed. Uh, Leo is connected with entertainment. So the entertainment industry is probably going to be front and center. Um, 
Creativity is also a very Leo topic, creativity and self-expression. Um, leaders, kings, and those who are in the spotlight, um, and, and people who, who kind of like have access to, to power, and they're also known for that, uh, are, are very much connected with the Leo energy. But let's not forget that we have an axis that we're dealing with here. So Aquarius is the sign opposing Leo, and Aquarius is all about the common folk, um, groups of people, communities, and it does feel like, with the help of Jupiter, we're gonna have to look at the big picture at the time of this full moon, and uh, pass some some sort of like laws and, and decree that uh, something's gotta stretch, something's gotta grow, and something's gotta die in terms of structures and systems, um, to make sure that both the needs of the common folk and of, of communities are, are, are met, but also, also to maybe make sure that um, power isn't hoarded by um, certain individuals, or, or maybe even wealth isn't hoarded by certain individuals. Are we likely to hear some news about maybe new laws connected with taxes, uh, investments, return on investments around this time? Yes, 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 yes. Maybe higher taxes. I mean, that's already been... I mean, it, it's been something that's been widely discussed here here in the UK, in Scotland. I, I haven't kept track of what's going on in the um, in the United States, but yeah, it is it is probably something that we're going to uh, hear quite 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 a lot about at the time of this full moon. Also, look at the three days before and the three days after the twenty fifth of January. By the way, folks, what else? What else? Whatever issues we're dealing at the time of this full moon with, money might solve it. Money seems to fix it. Where are we likely to get that money? I mean, it does feel like we're getting some sort of support from allies, from partners, from long-standing st kind of like partnerships. There's also the possible, well, I did mention this, but I'm going to mention it again. There's also a possibility that... Um, the full moon puts a spotlight on on topics such as too much food, too much accumulation, um, some sort of overgrowth that needs to be culled and that needs to be reduced and 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 shrunk in some shape or form. Scorpio is the empty uh, leg of this uh, of this T square between Jupiter, the Sun, and uh, the Moon, and Scorpio is an energy connected with purging. Okay. Um, Politics, political announcements, um, political alliances, um, political groups rising to power. All of these are probably going to be in the spotlight at the time of this full moon. Power is an interesting topic. I feel like we're going to talk a lot about power with Pluto and Aquarius. The power of technology, the power of people, the power of organizations, large organizations, some organizations losing power, some organizations rising to power, um, um, power that is being given to organizations behind the scenes. I'm very curious. I'm very curious to see what's going to be in the news at the time of this full moon. But folks, if you're watching this, please also share your thoughts, share your comments, share your findings in the um, in, in, in the comments below, because I, I am very curious to hear how you, what you pick up on and how you would also interpret some of the announcements, messages, and news that we're likely to, to, to listen to and, and, and read about at the time of the full moon in Leo. Now, before we dive into the update for each of the 12 zodiac signs, I do want to uh, share a few things. First and foremost, if you want to work with me, uh, you can find me on my website, folks, which is written in the stars-astrology.com. That is written in the stars-astrology.com. At the time when I'm filming this uh, video, I'm not taking any bookings. Um, my services are sold out. I am uh, fully booked until the end of February. However, I am going to be restocking my services on my website in the next few weeks. So watch this space, um, watch uh, the announcements on the community tab on, on YouTube. If you're following me on Instagram, you can also 
You're also going to see an announcement on Instagram. Uh, my Instagram handle is at RuxUnbelievable in one word. That's RuxUnbelievable. So watch this space. I do work with clients full time. Um, that is that is the bulk of my work. And um, you can go for um, if you're a new if you're a new client, uh, the one hour, 15 minutes Zoom consultation option. And if you're an existing client, there are two additional options for you on my website, which is the year ahead forecast, which I recommend if you are interested in better understanding what the 12 months ahead of us have in store for you and how you can make the most of them, but also the 30 minutes follow up consultation. Um, now, if you have not had an astrological reading in the past with anyone, uh, I would recommend as as a first time client, uh, starting with the natal chart, starting with the uh, with the birth chart, which is, as I like to call it, and not just myself, but also a lot of people call it in the astrological community, the root prediction, it helps us better understand ourselves, our soul's intentions, what we are here to learn, what we are here to become better at, uh, where our strengths lie, where we receive support, and how we can make the most of the cards that we have been dealt. If you have, however, had um, natal chart readings in the past, we can obviously customize the one hour, 15 minute Zoom consultation to accommodate your needs. We can analyze the year ahead, so we can do a deep dive year ahead forecast to look at compatibility, astrocartography, so how certain locations in the world activate your natal chart, how to um, best work with your natal planetary placements for success in a specific area, such as money, finances, career, for for instance. So how you can live a much more aligned life and how you can maximize what you have been bestowed upon by uh, by the universe. So completely customizable to your to your own needs. Uh, that is one thing that I would like you to remember uh, as as a new time client, if you're going for as a first time client, gosh, I've just invented a new expression as a first time client going for the one hour, 15 minutes zoom um, consultation. If you're a student of astrology, you can also purchase three recorded courses on my uh, on my website. They are not for beginners. However, they are for intermediate and advanced uh, students, more like intermediate plus um, the natal chart interpretation masterclass, the forecasting with transits and solar return um, course, which is over 12 hours long. And literally, folks, I've I basically poured a decade of me studying and practicing astrology into that course. Uh, by by the time you finalize that course, you're going to be able to build um, year ahead forecasts using transits and solar returns from scratch. And the Saturn transits masterclass, if you better, uh, if you want to make a better use of, of Saturn transits, if you want to better understand what they are about, how you can um, capitalize upon them, how you can work with them. <laughs> such a Saturn keyword, work with them. So that is the course for uh, for you. Now, without further ado, let's dive into the update for each of the 12 zodiac signs. And of course, we're gonna start with the one, the only um, Aries, obviously. My lovely Aries, Aries suns and Aries risings. 25th of January, the full moon in Leo is activating your fifth house, 11th house axis. I mean, I'm liking this. I'm liking it because <laughs> I'm liking it because you're probably going to be celebrating something. It feels like you're going to be uh, celebrating with your friends. It feels like you're probably going to be spending quite a bit of money <laughs> because this full moon is squaring Jupiter. So careful not to overspend. There is uh, some sort of a... Mm, there's an energy of excess and overdoing things at the time of this full moon. So you could be overspending uh, on some sort of a social occasion, social event, on some sort of a party. Um, maybe you're hosting, maybe you're inviting people to your uh, to your place and, and uh, you're feeling like particularly generous and you're like, yes, yes, I'm gonna buy everything. I'm, I'm gonna order all the food and I'm gonna buy all the drinks and, and, so, and so on. Um, you might be also making a very significant expense around this time, um, connected with children. If you have children already, then you might know what this is about. If you don't have children, <laughs> uh, maybe you are planning to uh, have children at some point and maybe you're thinking, okay, um, what do I need to do? What do I need to spend money on in order to align myself with that, um, with that energy? I do believe you could also celebrate some sort of win, some sort of rise, uh, maybe financial rise um, from, a, uh, from a career perspective. Maybe you got that promotion. Maybe you're making more money. Maybe you put up your services uh, in terms of like pricing. 
you put up your prices or your services, not your services for your prices. Um, I'm also seeing this. This could be a time when you might travel or you might be making plans to travel or you could be spending money on traveling, my lovely, uh, my lovely Aries, if that is the case. My big recommendation is to look very closely at what it is that you maybe need to spend less money on because if you do have a big trip ahead of you or if you are paying for a big trip, it's, it's gonna cost, it's gonna be expensive. So just saying, last but not least, this can be a time when some Aries hear news of pregnancy if that is something that you are actively interested in trying for and and so um and so on so of course that might result in you revisiting your budget and saying okay what do i need to what do i need to budget for what is gonna what is this gonna cost me or or what do i need to buy but anyway it, there's this sort of like energy of like celebration and fun and um actually being overjoyed with with something i i dare uh, i dare say taurus taurus suns and taurus risings uh full moon in leo 25th of january active three days before three days after um this is activating your 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 access of private life versus public life look back at what was going on in your home and in your family life and in your kind of private life and living situation around the middle of august of last year because this full moon could bring things to completion or to a culminating point. Um, the family could be growing and expanding. Uh, you could be planning to make a move, um, maybe to move into a, a bigger home. Um, it does feel like maybe there are some, some big changes coming up also in terms of your status and place in the world. And... Um, you might be wondering how am I going to how am I going to um, deal with my needs or responsibilities or uh, everything that I had um, planned or built at home as a result of my my, my status changing. Uh, this could also be a big uh, a very significant time when. It feels like you're saying goodbye to maybe an existing home and, and, uh, and living situation and you're preparing for your future to look very, very, very differently. As I said, maybe because you're moving, maybe because you're relocating, maybe because you're selling a home, maybe because the family is growing and you need to, to accommodate and to, to adjust for, uh, for that. I want to say that you seem to be benefiting from the help of friends, but also of in-laws if, in if you are in a relationship and if you have in-laws. Could this be a time when maybe there's there's news about spending time away from home, um, maybe because of traveling connected with work? Yes, very, very possibly. I am gonna also say this, you might need to break some sort of news to a to, to the to the family about how your life is going to change, possibly career-wise, but also home and and um living situation um wise. It does feel like you're gonna have to you're gonna have to think very strategically my dear uh, Torians around this time as to what is sustainable in your personal life and what is no longer sustainable moving um, moving forward you're not the person who you used to be your life is going in a different direction you seem to be quite excited about it but something's got to give I, I don't believe you can kind of like keep up at this at this pace if you uh, if you ask me because otherwise it's probably going to be very hard on you even physically like health wise it might feel like a lot. Gemini's Gemini suns and Gemini risings. Um, this full moon 25th of January active three days before three days after is activating your access of learning traveling um, communication um, correspondences buying selling. Um, I do believe that you could wrap up some sort of a class or course maybe you're hearing news connected with your your studies um maybe you're hearing news connected with with your um academic path maybe you're submitting something in terms of um like a final paper like exams or like a final thesis of of uh, of some sorts um i am seeing also the possibility of maybe your partner having some sort of big announcement to make 
something that you did not see coming. Um, something that does take you by surprise. Maybe it does have some sort of a legal implication or an implication um, that involves you traveling or, or, or them traveling or um, that involves you maybe letting go of... I'm going to say... some sort of pre-existing agreement that involves finances, my dear, uh, my dear Geminis. Um, you do seem to feel quite stretched in terms of mental capacity around this time. Maybe it feels like you have to study a lot. Maybe it feels like you have to learn a lot uh, really quickly. Maybe it feels like you're just overwhelmed with, uh, with information. Um, I would not hesitate to... to to ask for the support of someone, maybe someone who can kind of like offload certain things off, off your off your plate. Um, maybe someone that you trust, someone that is practical, down to earth, um, someone that maybe is is um, well versed in whatever it is that you're dealing with at a at a mental level. And this could also be a time when you sell something. It could be a car. Um, it could be a bike or your preferred means of transportation. Um, I am seeing you having to, to maybe also have some, some important conversations around this time with partners, um, financial partners, uh, life partners, um, and it could have something to do with money, in general, money budgeting, um, but also it could have something to do with your plans career-wise and your long-term goals career-wise. Uh, career um, last but not least, if you are traveling, my big recommendation is to maybe around this time, if you're traveling or if you're planning to travel to get insurance because um, it could feel like you're maybe a little bit stuck somewhere and, and you can't move for, for some time, uh, it could have something to do with maybe um, weather events or, or, or something along those lines. And last but not least, uh, this could also be a time maybe when you when you have to make a significant payment connected with education or with a legal matter. Cancerians, Cancer Suns and Cancer Risings. Uh, this full moon is activating your houses, your houses, both of them, of income. Look back at what was going on in terms of money, budgeting, income, uh, middle of August of 2023, because this full moon could bring things to a culminating point. Some of you could be paying your taxes around this time. Uh, some of you could be paying like a like a big lump sum of money, uh, maybe to cover a debt or, or to cover something like, I don't know, like a mortgage or, or something along those uh, along those lines. There could be news. I'm going to put it out there. Uh, if, if you have any sort of like debt, uh, mortgages, loans or anything like that of, of interest rates going up and maybe of you having to pay more. However, however, if that is the case, I'm looking at Saturn sextiling Venus at the time of this full moon. I would ask for the advice of maybe like uh, like a financial advisor or like an accountant or someone who's very kind of um, skilled uh, and, and who has... Uh, a significant amount of knowledge when it comes to dealing with financial matters. It could, as I said, it could be your accountant, for example, or it could just be your partner or like a good friend, because they might be able to, to help you navigate maybe this, this, uh, this feeling of, and the reality of maybe having kind of like increasing expenses, I, I, I wanna, I wanna say. Similarly, however, you could receive a lump sum of money around this time, a big paycheck, like, I don't know, like, um, uh, a big return on investment or like a bonus or news of a bonus or something like that. There could be news also of uh, a rise in terms of salary around this uh, around this time. I am actually seeing both things happening. So both maybe you paying off something, but also experiencing some sort of growth, some sort of um, expansion from a material perspective. However, this could put you in a very interesting position where, where you're kind of like, you're feeling a bit stuck as to what to do with <laughs> I know maybe that's maybe that's just like a maybe just that's just like a nice problem to have what to do with this money what to do with this rise in 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 income what to do with this lump sum of money so you may need to plan very carefully for 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 that um let's say you you get like a big bonus how are how are you going to to manage that are you going to invest it are you going to pay something off um are you going to buy something uh are you going to go out and celebrate with your friends 
it could be a combination of all the uh, of all the afore, uh, of all the aforementioned. Um, there's also a possibility that your partner might see some sort of a rise in, in, in terms of like income and finances. And as a result of that, you may need to revisit your plans for the future and ask yourselves, okay, what do we do with this? This is bigger than we thought. I mean, once again, maybe a nice problem to have, but um, your partner actually seems to be very, like like a, like a supportive, kind of like grounding, a stabilizing force for those of you who are in a relationship. If you're not in a relationship, it could be um, someone who is like a counselor or like an advisor uh, or someone like, like a friend that you trust that knows money, uh, essentially. So I would talk to them about what to do, what to do next. Um, Leo's, Leo suns and Leo risings. This full moon, of course, my lovely Leo's puts the spotlight on you because it is happening in your sign. So you might feel very much in the limelight. It's like all eyes on you. Everyone's got something to say. Everyone's got something to share. Uh, everyone's uh, maybe got an opinion about you. Um, it feels like this is a big culminating point for you on a personal level in terms of some things that some things that's got to do with your uh, relationship status. So maybe you're going through like a change of status relationship wise. Maybe you're announcing I don't know your your engagement or your commitment to someone. Um, this is also a, a very kind of important crossroads I want to say for business partnerships, my dear Leos. You might need to look very closely at who you want to collaborate moving forward, who's going to help you grow career-wise, um, who is going to be able to support you on this path of sustained growth professionally, because you do seem to be growing professionally. However, not everyone that you've maybe collaborated with, not all business partners, not all business advisors, not all professional um, uh, relationships um, will be aligned with the direction of this growth, my lovely Leos. Um, maybe, well, I am seeing this as a significant possibility. Maybe you need to travel for, for career purposes around this time, or uh, there's also a sense of having to uh, stretch yourselves in terms of beliefs and life philosophy and kind of like outgrow outdated beliefs when it comes to where you thought you would be going career-wise in, um, in this lifetime. Your partner could also be going, for those of you who are in a relationship, um, they could be going through a massive kind of like um, process of transformation in their home and family life. And it feels like you're kind of like called to attend to three different areas at the same time, which might cause a little bit of like physical stress and tension, uh, Leos. Um, your partner is is going through through their, their own kind of like death and rebirth. Um, you're growing career-wise and you're being asked to maybe step up and to get out of your comfort zone and and to um, say yes to uh, the possibility of further growth. But then you might be asking yourselves, Leos, how do I how do I attend to my needs? Like who cares? Who here cares about what my needs are and about, and about what I want and about what I have to say in this whole uh, in this whole thing? Um, what I can tell you is that your career is going from strength to strength. And yes, maybe, how should I put it? Sometimes opportunities and growth and uh, good luck is actually delivered, disguised as a door closing for us and another door opening. And I know a lot of people are scared of change and I know a lot of people, I mean, obviously myself included at times, um, I know a lot of people are very reluctant to change the status quo because what do they say? If it ain't broke, why fix it? Or better the devil you know, or, or, or things like that. But what I can tell you is whatever is going on career-wise for you at this point in time, Leos, see it as a blessing and see it as an opportunity to grow and to step up and see it as an opportunity to gain in terms of status, position, respect, expertise, um, and money. That doesn't mean that you won't feel a little bit maybe emotionally overwhelmed, I, I wanna uh, I wanna say. Virgos, Virgo suns and Virgo risings. Um, this full moon activates your axis of service and health, my lovely Virgos. 25th of January, three days before, three days after. I mean, it might be a good time to take a, a few days off. It might be a good time to, to, to stop, to rest, to, um, to, to take a little bit of a breather, to take a break. Um, 
it does feel like you could be a little bit stretched maybe by all the work that you've had to do um maybe also in conjunction with people from from uh different offices from abroad uh maybe also people from from um foreign lands, foreign countries, foreign cultures. It does feel like you, you've you had to stretch yourselves, Virgos, in terms of communicating and working with these people because it doesn't feel like it was easy to, to align yourselves with, with these folks. And it does feel like maybe there's a need to compromise in terms of just reaching an agreement and just kind of like finalizing some sort of work-related uh, project around this time. I do see you finalizing a work-related project, but I also see you being just kind of partially on board with the way uh, things have been done, catch your breath, maybe get get away from it all, maybe spend some time with your partner. Um, if you want to take a break, if you want to um, just kind of like take a few days off, it does feel like uh, partners, uh, children, um, maybe even, I mean, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say, um, maybe even friends, um, could be those who, who, who you can turn to around this time and and just kind of like sit down let them let them support you let them look after you let them um I feel like you're quite high strung at the time of this full moon um Virgos uh, and you might be quite quite stressed and anxious about uh, about something connected with your work maybe also with your health I'm gonna put it out there you just seem to need rest. And you just seem to need maybe someone in your life to, to bring you back to the present moment, to, to maybe comfort you a little bit and maybe to take you out and, and like feed you some good food. It doesn't mean that they're going to physically feed you, but just go out, get away from it all. Uh, maybe go to the, go, go to the spa with a friend or, or, um, or with a partner. Um, because it does seem to be incredibly healing and soothing. If you don't do that, then you are putting a lot of stress and strain on your health. I'm just gonna say it. I mean, obviously everyone's got free will. You can decide to go about this however you however you want. But, 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 um, you do seem to have taken on a lot and, um, It just feels like you might also need to change your 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 beliefs and your philosophy around work. Um, truly, Virgos, around this around this time. On a more practical level, some of you might let go, Virgos, of a job, and if you are feeling maybe a little bit worried or stressed about that, my recommendation would actually be to not worry that much. I am gonna. I am gonna say it. Why? Because uh, Saturn, which is the ruler of your house of day-to-day -day work, is very nicely aspected to both Venus and Jupiter, so to both benefics. So if you're leaving behind a job for a better job, um, yes, it's probably gonna pay off. Don't over-worry yourselves to death, please. I realize I'm talking to Virgos, and I realize that, that there is a little bit of a tendency towards over-worrying and towards uh, maybe a bit of anxiety. Libras, Libra suns and Libra risings. What does this full moon have in store for you, my lovely Libras? So full moon in Leo, 25th of January, active uh, three days before, three days after. Um, this full moon is saying, go out with your people, go out with your friends. Um, connect with your friends, connect with your people, connect with your tribe, um, connect with your community. And also, 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 ask yourselves, are the communities that I'm a part of the ones that are going to bring the highest amount of joy and fulfillment moving forward? Or do I need to change something? Do I need to maybe um, slowly but surely um, distance myself from a friend or from a group of people or from an, from an existing community that, that, I was, uh, that I was a part of? Um, you might be saying goodbye to a professional community around this time. You might be saying goodbye maybe to some colleagues. Uh, maybe you're celebrating the fact, <laughs> this is going to sound really bad, but uh, basically here in the UK, we do something which is called leaving drinks. I mean, I'm sure it's done in, in a lot of places. Uh, I was about to say, maybe you're celebrating that some colleagues are leaving work and you're no longer going to be working with them. But it's not in a, in a, in, in, in a negative sense, uh, as in, oh, you hated working with these people. It's just like, okay, you're no longer going to be working with, with these, um, with these people. Um, 
I am seeing some sense of expansion and growth in terms of investments potentially, but I would kind of like tread very carefully be because there can be a tendency to, to, to get greedy or to overdo things, I'd, uh, I'd say. Um, I'm also seeing the possibility of successfully working around this time to organize some sort of group event. And if that is the case, it's probably going to turn out beautifully, but there might be more people showing up than initially thought. <laughs> so if you are planning some sort of group event, um, I would maybe add that sort of a buffer in case more people show up. Just putting it out there. Um, last but not least, whatever it is that you're dealing with, do not hesitate if you're feeling stressed to ask for help uh, from family members or from um, romantic partners, because you're probably going to get it. Just, um, just saying. I would be very careful around this time, Libras, with taking on more debt. There can be a tendency to stretch yourselves too thin, maybe to buy things on credit cards and so on. Is it worth it? Maybe not. Maybe not. I don't know. You, of course, you, you, you can do with your money whatever you want, but is it really going to make people like you more? Is it really going to make them happier? Is it really going to make that party that you're maybe organizing the, I don't know, the, the talk of the block? I don't know if that's what's going to make it or break it. I, I feel like it's the human connection uh, that's going to make it or break it. So enjoy. Scorpio, Scorpio suns and Scorpio risings. Um, this full moon coming up in Leo, 25th of January, active three days before three days after is putting the spotlight on your career and public status, my dear Scorpios. A culminating point career-wise, Scorpios, you could be finalizing an important project career-wise. You could be maybe presenting something in the public space career-wise. Maybe something that you've been working on or that you've been focusing on since the middle of August. Um, it does feel like uh, the spotlight is on you in the professional space. Um, it also feels like maybe you need to be very strategic with a business partnership and with a professional partnership around this time. Um, it does feel like in order to accommodate uh, for, for future career, for potential future career growth, uh, Scorpios, uh, you might need the support of someone who you don't necessarily uh, see eye to eye fully with in terms of beliefs and life philosophies. It does feel like you might need to stretch yourselves in this direction. You might need to consider someone else's worldview and beliefs and perspectives, maybe perspectives that to you seem overly conservative, that to you might seem overly traditional, uh, overly... Um, attached to the status quo, but nevertheless, it feels like this person is going to be probably very um, important. It, they're going to be instrumental in your um, career growth moving forward. You might have some sort of a big announcement to make connected to your relationship sector. If you're getting engaged, if you're looking to move in with your partner, if you're going to have a child, for instance, you might shout that out from the, from the, from the rooftops. Um, this could also be a time when some of you say goodbye to an existing position and status uh, from a professional standpoint, but maybe also in terms of how you contribute to society in general, uh, because your relationships are, are, are growing, your relationship sector is growing, maybe you're, I'm, I'm just going to put it out there. Maybe you're moving with your partner and you're you're saying goodbye to your old job because you're moving to a different city or maybe even to a different country. Or maybe you're going to have a child with your partner and as a result you have to kind of like make way for 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 um a new stage in your life and you could be saying goodbye to to an existing position. Um whatever's going on, I do feel like there is a reason to celebrate and to enjoy um, what it is that you're building together with a partner or with a collaborator uh, around this uh, around this time, Scorpios. Sagittarius, Sagittarius suns and Sagittarius risings. 25th of January, active three days before, three days after. This full moon is putting the spotlight on your ninth house, third house axis. So uh, my dear Sagittarians, if you're waiting for news connected with legal matters, um, um, news connected with your um, studies, education, academic path, or also news connected with publishing, for instance, or, or marketing campaigns. Um, you're probably going to get your news, um, very likely, uh, but it might it might bring more work on your plate. It might it might ask you to kind of like 
maybe add to something that you've already done, that you've already completed in this regards. Let's say that you've, you've applied for, I don't know, your, your, you being admitted to, to a PhD program and you might hear back from them and they might say, oh, and we want you to also submit this, 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 and this. So it's like, okay, extra work. <laughs> more work on my radar. Um, you could also travel for work-related purposes or for health-related purposes around this time. There can be a tendency to go overboard. So careful with careful with that, careful not to um, stretch yourself too thin. Essentially, for example, if you're traveling for, for work purposes, there's only so many people that you can talk to. There's only so many presentations that you can um, contribute to. There's only so many uh, PowerPoints that you can work on. Um, you do seem to be feeling a little bit stretched. There's like a lot of people to talk to. There's a lot of um, there's a lot of messages to send forward. There's a lot of traveling around this time, or a lot of like plans to travel on your on your radar. My big recommendation is to scale down if you can. And if you're wondering how do I do that, ask your family, ask a parent, ask a family member, ask a sibling, because they might be able to they might be able to help. Um, you might be having some sort of a significant expense connected with traveling or education that you need to take care of around this time. Um, you might also pay for something from an educational perspective that is going to help you grow career-wise. And I do see that as a good thing. However, however, um, you might need a little bit of support maybe from someone in your life. Um, Sagittarians, maybe, maybe a family member, um, possibly maybe a sibling, um, which is also a family member. Last but not least, um, this could also be the time when you maybe sell something in order to pay for something else connected with your education. Uh, I, I, I wanna, I wanna say, um, health-wise, it feels like you really need to alter some of your beliefs and philosophies around how to take care of yourselves, Sagittarians. You seem to overdo things. You seem to take on too much. Also, if you've been taking on too much in terms of too much working out or too much food uh, or or trying to just kind of like overdo it, um, something's got to give, if you ask me, because it is not conducive to health. It is just conducive to more stress. I, I wanna I wanna say, take the time to rest. Take the time to take things one one, one step at a time. Um, take the time to be with family because they seem to have a very grounding, stabilizing influence upon you emotionally. And also, also, whatever work you've got to do, I would also be careful not to say yes to everything just because. You're in a good place financially, you're growing work-wise, but you don't want to negatively impact your health just because you're saying yes to everything work-wise. Capricorns, Capricorn suns, and Capricorn risings. This full moon, 25th of January, active three days before, three days after, activates your financial axis. Um, you've got money that you need to pay... I'm looking at mortgages, I'm looking at loans, I'm looking at debts, I'm looking at what you owe to other people. I'm also looking at payments connected with children, um, maybe also payments connected with education and payments connected with your um, with your studies, possibly. You might take on some sort of a loan or a debt in order to pay for uh, something fun or entertaining or, or, or something that, that is very kind of like close to your, close to your heart. If you are taking any sort of like loan, let's say to pay off for, to pay, to pay like for, for a trip or, or something like that, I would look very closely at things like interest rates. And I would also um, speak with people who are uh, maybe more knowledgeable in this space, maybe a sibling, maybe, um, I'm even thinking of, let's see, let's see, let's see. I'm even thinking of a parent, maybe your mom. Um, is it worth you taking this loan? Is it is is it worth you maybe, I don't know, borrowing from family and then just kind of like paying them paying them off? Um, you do seem to be so. There's a part of you that is almost kind of like happy that you can pay for this. Uh, I don't want to say that you're happy with the expense, but it seems to be for a good cause. As I said, it could be connected with, with children. It could be connected with your, your passions, your hobbies, with something that's going to bring a lot of joy. Um, but I would also look at maybe potentially what needs to be cut out of your life in terms of expenses. So it could be a good time to revisit budgets. 
um, so that you can maybe invest more in what genuinely makes you happy. And it does seem to be a time when you maybe need to revisit your beliefs and your philosophy around expenses in general, and also around shared expenses and kind of like joint accounts, joint um, budgets. So I'm thinking if you're married, if you're in a couple, if you share assets with someone, if you share like a bank account with someone, maybe you need to sit down and have a conversation and say, okay, let's revisit the terms and agreements. Let's revisit the, the, the terms of our, of our, uh, yeah, of, of our agreements when it comes to finances. Um, your partner might also have a significant expense around this time that they need to deal with. And it could feel like a, a little bit of a hit to your budget. But at the same time, at the same time, rather than freaking out, I would just sit down and say, okay, let's pay for this. But what else needs to be cut out? And what is more important to us? Is it paying for this big expense or is it paying for something else? I mean, you can have that conversation and it probably, it's probably going to be a very constructive conversation, a very civilized conversation. And if anything, it actually seems to contribute to better understanding between you and a partner. Aquarius, my Aquarius uh, brothers and sisters, Aquarius suns and Aquarius risings. Uh, this full moon in, in Leo activates your house of relationships. The spotlight is definitely going to be uh, on your on your relationship sector, uh, on your partners, life partners, business partners. Um, also, the spotlight is going to be placed on open enemies and open adversaries. <laughs> it's funny how the seventh house in astrology is the house of marriage and also the house of adversaries and, and open enemies and opponents. Um, this full moon is in a tense aspect to Jupiter in the house of home and living situation. It feels like together with your partner, you maybe need to revisit an existing home and family and living situation agreement. Um, maybe because the family is growing, you need to revisit the space that you live in. Um, maybe because you're no longer happy with the home that you live in and, and you, you have different plans for the future, you need to sit down and say, okay, how can we accommodate uh, my, my, uh, my preferences? How can you accommodate your partner's preferences? The partner might be quite demanding. Um, you might also be a little bit inflexible about certain things, but something's got to give. And if you're in doubt, I would even talk to a family member or to a friend about the, the, the conundrum that you're, that you're in. Because someone from the outside uh, who, who is not as emotionally involved might have this sort of like detached, objective um, input to bring to the, um, to bring to the table. Um, it does feel like there's something expanding and, and, and stretching and growing in terms of private life, home life and family life. Um, maybe you're moving to a different home, to a bigger home with a partner. Um, there is a possibility that one of you I'm thinking maybe you, Aquarius, are actually making more money. And as a result, the partner could say, okay, let's buy a bigger home or let's overpay the mortgage and so on. I don't believe you're fully, 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 fully aligned on how to spend that money. <laughs> and I think it might be worth sitting down and, and having like, um, like a very kind of like calm, tolerant conversation about a joint vision for your future. Um, Saturn is going to be nicely aspected to Venus and to Jupiter. Um, I do feel like if you are being a little bit more tolerant, a little bit more empathetic, Aquarius, it's you who I'm talking to, uh, a little bit more understanding of, of the person in front of you, even if, if they feel uh, like they're being very stubborn, even if they feel very, very like they're being very inflexible, I do believe you're going to reach some sort of an agreement. And if you do cave in a little bit, you might find yourselves in a, met in, in a better kind of um, position in the long term in terms of home situation, living situation, and in terms of your relationship, my dear, uh, my dear Aquarians. This could be a time when you decide to move in with a partner or um, also, also maybe when you decide to have a very serious conversation with a partner about um, joint expenses and about kind of like a joint vision for the future that involves expenses. Now talking about hidden enemies, not hidden enemies. I, I feel like this is, well, there is an element of hidden enemies and an element of like open adversaries at the time of this full moon that, that, that is coming to mind, uh, Aquarians. If there's someone who is 
openly, blatantly opposing you in terms of accomplishing something, um, when it comes to your plans for the future, when it comes to your home and living situation, you're probably going to know who this person is. And also, also, you're going to be able to read through them and kind of like see where they hold or, or what their aces are or where they have kind of like aces up their, uh, up their sleeve. Um, this person does seem to be very stubborn, but they also seem to be maybe not as strategic uh, as as you are, I, I wanna um, I wanna say Aquarians. And also, I feel like there's a possibility for you to turn an, an, an open adversary and an open enemy into a collaborator in some shape or form. If you do demonstrate a little bit of empathy, if you do demonstrate a little bit of compassion, and if you just listen a little bit and make them feel heard, I'd, um, I'd say. Pisces, Pisces suns, and Pisces risings. Full moon in Leo, my dear Pisces. Uh, what is this uh, full moon about for you? So, work, health, and um, the completion of a work-related project, I, I want to say. What were you working on, Pisces, um, in August of last year? Because this full moon could bring things to completion. Some of you could... Oh. I apologize. So some of you uh, at the time of this full moon could say yes to a new job and goodbye to another to another job. Uh, you could be completing a work related project. There's probably going to be more work coming from this in the future. I I wanna I wanna say. Um, there's also a sense of maybe this work related project having stretched you in terms of in terms of capacity capability and maybe in terms of like knowledge and 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 skill set my dear my dear pisces if you are wrapping up some sort of work related project i would take one big thing out of this which is what do i need to learn from this and what else do i need to study moving forward do i need to take any courses any classes in order to do a better job in the future in a similar in a similar setup in a similar environment I am seeing you possibly presenting something for work, uh, something that you've really worked very hard on, um, and it, it might it might involve like a like a written presentation, like documentation of of, of some sorts. Um, I am seeing you feeling actually quite at peace with with the work that you're that that you're delivering. And if you are presenting something in a public environment, if you've got an audience around this time, uh, the feedback is probably going to be very, um, very positive. Uh, this could also be a time when someone leaves your your team at work. And um, on the one hand, it could feel like maybe you've got more on your plate. <laughs> maybe there's going to be some some tasks and duties and responsibilities that you need to take on board. But on the other hand, um, it does feel like this is going to allow you to stretch yourselves, Pisces, and maybe this is going to lead to even more exciting opportunities in the future career-wise. Um, career um, Health-wise, careful not to overdo things, careful not to um, do too much too quickly, too soon. Uh, you do seem to be absorbing a lot of information about health. Um, you seem to be wanting to read all the books, like know all the, all the, uh, all the ins and outs about uh, maybe, maybe how you can improve your health moving forward. But you seem to be forgetting one big thing. Um, more is not always better. And sometimes less is more. And sometimes mental health and emotional health is one of the biggest sources of physical health, wellness, and well-being there is out there. And last but not least, you do seem to, to be in the process of changing some of your beliefs around food and nutrition at the time of this full moon. So some of the things that maybe you were eating before this full moon, you might realize, mm, if I want to be healthy, maybe I need to cut down on this. And maybe I need to look at this whole kind of like aspect of like feeding myself differently, I'd, I'd say. That is your full moon update, folks. I hope it is useful. Uh, don't forget to uh, leave a comment uh, and uh, and let us know how how things uh, play out for you at the time of this uh, of this full moon. Um, don't be afraid of change. Don't be afraid to stretch yourself. Don't be afraid to say this situation has has been good for a while, but now I have outgrown it. Outgrowing things is is a big theme at the time of this full moon. 
And um, don't forget, if you want to work with me, you can find me on my website, which is written in the stars astrology.com. That is written in the stars astrology.com. I will be restocking uh, services on my website in the next few weeks. And if you would like to um, thank me for this uh, for this content, uh, you can leave a donation using the thanks button underneath the underneath the video on uh, on YouTube. I will see you next time, folks. Thank you. Bye.